Okay, I'm joined now by Stan Lawler, and Stan is a research officer based in Johnstown Castle, and uh, Stan gave a paper this morning on the benefits of soil fertility, which he outlined in five simple steps. So Stan, maybe you just uh, recount what those uh, steps were, please. Yeah, we spoke about kind of soil fertility management, and I, I mentioned how farmers are very tuned into managing various aspects of their farm, whether it's grassland or herd health or, or breeding. So, so soil fertility has slipped down the agenda a bit over a number of years, and we're trying to get it back up the agenda. So to do that, I'm, I'm kind of telling farmers to look at soil fertility in terms of five simple things that they can do on their farm and set targets for, for five simple, simple steps for soil fertility management. The first thing to try and do is make sure you have soil tests for the whole farm. Soil tests are very important because they really give you the baseline of where you are in terms of your soil fertility and if you don't know where you are in terms of your background soil fertility levels, how do you plan your fertiliser for the future? So having that uh, soil test for, the, for all the fields on your farm gives you a great baseline from where to build in terms of a fertiliser plan. So that's step number one. So the first target is such is to have soil tests for the whole farm. The second target or the second step in soil fertility management is to manage soil pH. Soil pH is probably the most critical soil property that determines how well your soils will perform in terms of overall health, overall biological activity and overall nutrient release and fertility level in terms of supplying the grass with the nutrients that, that it needs to grow. And from the point of view of soil pH, it's very important that the first thing you do when you get your soil results is look at your pH, look at the lime requirement that's recommended, and apply your lime as per the requirements to make sure your pH is where it needs to be. So that's step two. So the second target, if you like, is to make sure that the soil pH on your farm is close to that target pH for grassland, which is in the region of 6.2, 6.3. The third target is when you have your soil tests and you have your soil pH correct, is to get the farm P and K fertility levels into the target, uh, what we call a target index of index three. And we have this index system which basically simplifies the soil test result into a number of indexes which specify whether the soil is very, is very low or low, which are index one and two, the target index which is index three, or index four which is very high. And basically, we build the advice on the basis that if a soil is in index 3, that's kind of where you want the soil to be. And in index 3, that's where the soil has enough nutrients to supply the grass with the nutrients that it needs. But you need to keep it there by putting back the nutrients that you're taking away. So we, st we build the nutrient advice at index 3 based on the offtake of the system, whether that's milk leaving the system in a grazing situation, or maybe whether it's a silage crop, or in some cases if a tillage crop is leaving the field. So with the target index, if your soil is in index 4, it's important to your soil test to identify that because if it's in index 4, it's very high and there's potential there to save money on fertiliser and exploit that resource that's in, the, that's in the index 4, the high fertility soil. Similarly, if you're in index 1 and 2, your soils are low or very low fertility, your soils need a little bit of extra care and attention in terms of P and K application rates, so it's important again with the soil test to identify those fields that are low and build them up with a little bit of extra P and K depending on what they require. And sorry, Stan, but are farmers, um, are they reaching these targets? You know, are, are a lot of the farms, um, soil samples coming in, are they in the correct index? No, what we find is actually a quite worrying trend when we analyse the samples coming through Chagas is that we tend to see an increase in the number of samples that are index 1 and 2 and a decrease in the samples that are index 3 and 4. If you look at the trend that has happened in terms of index 1 and 2, in 2007-2008, about 40% of the samples coming in from dairy farms were in index 1 and 2 but the percentage in index 1 and 2 by 2012 has increased to almost 60%. So there is a worrying trend out there in terms of the reduction in soil fertility on farms. The other thing that's important to remember in terms of what we see on average coming through the samples is that only about 25% of farms are in the target index 3. And it's very important, therefore, to soil test so that you know that those 75% of samples that are either very low, that you identify those fields and look after them. And similarly, the high ones, they're the ones when you can really save money because they're the ones that actually will allow you to save money on fertiliser. Okay, so a lot of work still to be done. So, so uh, what does that work amount to? Well, I suppose, it, it, continuing on the five steps, uh, so um, when you know your soil test, you know your requirements based on your, on your soil index, the, the step four is about managing the nutrient resources that you have on your farm. Um, and that's, as you said, this is about moving on in terms of you have your requirements, this is what you do about it. And the first thing is make sure that the nutrient resources on the farm that you have, particularly slurry is the big one, is that you manage that as effectively as possible. And really, I think every farmer should be asking two questions about slurry. One is where am I going to spread it? And the second one is when am I going to spread it? You should ask those questions in that order. 
And the reason is that where you spread will determine how much of the P and K fertiliser value that you will get back from slurry. A thousand gallons of cattle slurry, depending on, on dilution and variation, but typically a thousand gallons of cattle slurry is worth about 25 euros per thousand gallons. About 85 to 90 percent of that value is P and K. So it's very important you get that slurry to parts of the farm that have a P and K requirement. So the first thing is decide where on the farm am I going to target for slurry this year. That should be based on what fields are you harvesting for silage and what fields are low in P and K that need a little bit of extra P and K to build the fertility. The second question with slurry is when to spread. So when you know where it's going, try and optimise the timing that you make sure you get best value of the nitrogen that you can. And the key there is we, we recommend application in cooler, moister, more overcast conditions. Avoid the hot, dry sun, summer's day. Generally speaking, spring is, 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 is good advice in terms of trying to manage your farm and set it up in terms of a target. Try and get as much slurry out in spring, you should achieve a better end fertiliser value. But the key for slurry is where to spread and when to spread. The fifth key step is, and we're building a picture here because we've said we've, we have our soil tests, our lime is right, we know our P and K index where it needs to be and what fertiliser we need to get there. We've done our best with our slurry. The final thing is to make sure that the fertiliser you buy to balance all those various steps in, in, in the process is, the, is correctly balanced for all the nutrients to make sure that it's delivering exactly the nutrients do, that you need to complement your soil tests, to complement your slurry and to complement your system. And the, the key issue there really is, are the fertiliser compounds that I'm buying off the merchant the right mix for my farm and are the bags, you know, the bags breaker that I'm spreading the, you know, the correct product at the correct rate for, for the field that I'm talking about. P and K obviously is the big issue there and I suppose maybe it's, it's time reconsidering the products that I'm buying in terms of the mix of P and K and the relative ratios of the two nutrients. Maybe there's a place in the farm for more straight phosphorus fertiliser or more straight potassium, potassium fertiliser. Those products are available if you, to go down that road. The other, of course, important nutrient is to remember in that is sulphur. And again, a lot more farmers now are finding a good response to sulphur. And our advice for sulphur, of course, there's no soil test for sulphur, unfortunately, so you're a little bit limited in terms of, of the knowledge base. But if your soils are light textured, if they're low in organic matter, chances are you'll get a good response to sulphur. And the advice there is to apply 20 kilos per hectare for grazing or 20 kilos per hectare per cut if you're in a silage situation. And finally, Stan, the cost benefit of, of getting this soil fertility right? I suppose there's three, uh, the main cost in this, obviously you have some time investment in terms of getting, getting down and dirty from the point of view of, of you know, getting into the nitty gritty of the detail and I, and I would encourage any farmer to get, get involved in their fertiliser planning process to help with that, uh, be it through a Chagas advisor or whatever way they want to go. There, there are options there to make it a little bit simple, to produce a simpler output in terms of the, the, the product mix that you need, both at the whole farm level and on, on, an, individual, on an, individu an individual field level. But there is a time involvement there. But I suppose one of the big questions that comes up is, is it worth my while soil testing and is there a payback for it? And really, I suppose, the way to think about that is soil tests uh, cost, I suppose, anywhere up to 25 euros per sample and they'll do an area of three, four, five hectares for at least two, up to three or four years per sample. You know, and you, that does add up when you're taking a lot of samples on the farm. But a pallet, you know, two ton or a, or a, um, a ton of NPK fertilizer this year is going to cost you somewhere between 350 and 500 euros per ton. And that'll buy you an awful lot of soil samples. And the soil samples give you a huge amount of information in terms of, of, of deciding what fertilizer you should buy and making sure that your spend on fertilizer is optimized. So the second thing on return on investment, when you have the soil test results, in terms of using them better, take an example of an index four field, right? If you take a dairy scenario, stock to two cows per hectare, your typical PK advice there for grazing would be 14 kilos per hectare of P and 30 kilos per hectare of K. The cost of that P and K is approximately 58 euros. If you take a price for P of two euros and a price for K of one euro per kilo. If you soil test and you identify a field that's index four, well then you, you can say that you no longer need that maintenance rate on your index four field, so potentially you can save that 58 euros per hectare on the back of having the soil test information. Similarly, if you take an index one and two field, if you don't know what your index is, usually we would base advice on index three as a baseline. So in the absence of soil test, we say index three. If your soil test shows up in index one or two field, we estimate from various research results uh, from, from various trials we've done over the years that the yield penalty being an index one for phosphorus, for example, compared to being index three, is approximately one and a half tons of dry matter per hectare per year. If you take the cost of P build-up an index 1 to an index 3 field, granted you'll need to apply it for a number of years, um, but for P we recommend an additional 20 kilos per hectare, and for K we recommend an additional 60 kilos per hectare. The cost of that per year is about 100 euros, but the payback is, going back to your example for phosphorus, a tonne and a half of dry matter of grass 
could be worth potentially over 400 euros if you take it against a direct substitution with concentrate costs at the moment. So for 100 euro per hectare per year investment, you potentially could, could get a long-term benefit of 400 euros per hectare in terms of feed and dry matter production. So I think it's well worth our while taking more, putting, paying more attention to this issue. Okay, so a 300% return on investment. I think it's a good note to finish on for, for, for soil fertility uh, and for getting it right. Okay, Stan Lawler, thanks very much.